Thank you for finding a few extra minutes to spend with us and we can continue this discussion on the web. Jim, let's, let's go to you and uh, if you want to respond to some of the things uh, that Virginia was talking about. Well, I think, you know, the main focus of economic development and jobs, and this has been, we've been talking about this for a long time, and the West I-40 corridor has been looked at as an opportunity. Unfortunately, it's an opportunity that could not be realized because while we had a lot of land out there and we had great access to I-40, we did not have the infrastructure to support it. That has been changed. It's been changed by a $38 million private investment in the water and sewer system on the West Mesa. That's been provided by Western Albuquerque Land Holdings and it is changing the way that we can respond to economic development opportunities. And there are a lot of them, as John can certainly attest to as a former economic development director for both this, at the state level and at the city of Albuquerque. We have a lot of opportunities. We have not been able to capture a lot of those opportunities. And I think it's also important when we talk about jobs, not only to talk about those permanent economic development jobs, but also look at construction jobs as a component of that. Those are, those are good jobs, and they're jobs that we have a lot of people in our community, especially in the Southwest Mesa, South Valley, that are construction workers that are not doing as well as they should. They're out of work, they're limited work, we've got people working out of state, we've lost a lot of construction workers, and we need to find opportunities to bring those folks back in and, once again, grow the pie, provide good jobs for those folks so that, um, and that's where that disinvestment, those problems that we have in our existing communities, that is solely based on the amount of economic tax base that we're working with as a community. We need to grow it. We need to prosper. Let me ask this. Did you read that report that uh, Kelly O'Donnell uh, wrote about the uh, the projections for jobs and yes. uh, home building? Uh, it's sort of a, I mean, it, it leads one to, to uh, her, uh, it's, it's quite an incisive and a thorough report that says that uh, some of those projections that are in uh, the development proposal may be a little ambitious. So, can, I, can I speak to that real sure. quick? Because um, Kelly and I, apparently she had the same job I did. I didn't realize she was there uh, at all. But her analysis was, I, I can be a little bit critical because she's, you know, she's not about, I, I agree there's not looking at projections that many jobs that are gonna be coming probably. That's a very ambitious, uh, goal. However, this is why we need this development so that the, the jobs that do come, we can, we can anticipate that. If we don't grow, we die as a community. It, 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 we will atrophy like every community, small communities around the state, big cities like Detroit. And so we need to plan for what is going to happen. And so the jobs are for the people. Virginia you made a great point about uh, the infrastructure is already tired and it's not good enough yet. This is what we, the first plan is to build the infrastructure and plan for the community. Um, I, I can tell you with Mrs. O'Donnell's report, uh, in my opinion, didn't seem scientific. It seem, seemed like it was, it was a report. Uh, she got paid to, to produce a, 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 a topic, a critique, a critique um, and, and in my opinion, wasn't measured and wasn't balanced. And I think you can't perpetuate information that's not accurate or make assumptions from those numbers. I'll be the first to say the, the, the jobs numbers look a little bit ambitious. And, and I, I don't think they'll ever be that way, but let's be smart about how we plan this growth. And yeah. that's and what Mesa Sol stands as a perfect example of how there's promises of jobs, incoming jobs, but yet we see that. The entitlements um, are in place with right. Mesa del Sol and Right now, it's the developer that is paying the price for, for that development. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, we'll get their money back from that and employ you and others in the community in the jobs that come. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to still grow economic development-wise, or there's not enough economy within ourselves to make us uh, survive. Floyd, well, can I make one comment on, on, on Dr. O'Donnell's uh, yes, report? Please. And that is just that I think she makes a legitimate comment that when you look at projections, and we have, this is primarily a land use plan. So we're talking about land uses and designating those areas and preserving those areas for specific land uses. And that's critical. When you talk about, is it gonna develop in 
40 years, 50 years, 100 years. That really is, that's where those projections, so what I took from her report was a cr primarily a critique that this could take a lot longer to develop than we have necessarily anticipated. That's fine. It's going to develop in phases. It's going to develop over time. And the main thing is to make sure that we have planned for and provided the infrastructure to support those uses. Whether it takes place in 20 years, 50 years, or 100 years is really kind of immaterial. Um, it will have an impact on the developer and the investment that they make and how fast they recoup it. So it's in very much in their interest that they don't bite off more of the apple than they can chew. But it really isn't the community that it is negatively impacted by a longer build-out time schedule. It's primarily the developer who's impacted by that. Okay, and we will uh, link that report uh, from our website as well. And I would just make sure you link uh, the reports done by David Tausig and Associates as well, which are on the web on the county's website. And those are both a fiscal and an economic analysis that was done by a company that is very highly regarded and do this work primarily for cities and counties all across the United States. We'll be happy to. Yes. Let's do that. Okay. Rod. So I'd like to actually, being this topic is sort of the, you know, wh whose economic analysis is better than the others and whose dog is bigger, whatnot. Uh, well, one of the things that's very difficult from my perspective is actually to try to find some objective information about this. I mean, clearly they have their perspective. We're going to have our perspective. We all come to the table in the discussion with our own biases. So where, where do you actually get this information? So, um, and I don't know if that's possible, but from my perspective, the place to go is Mr. Cog. So the 2040 plan does not have Santa Lina in it for a number of reasons. It has to do with infrastructure investment associated with transportation and also other associated infrastructure, infrastructure costs, costs, excuse me. The, the issue is, is that it, once you get outside of the urban core, the extension of this infrastructure, and they, are, they already talked about the $38 million associated with the water infrastructure, which actually feeds the development on the north side of I-40. Certainly, the, they're willing to uh, essentially invest in that particular aspect of it, but really this is a public partner, public private partnership associated with it. There are infrastructure costs that uh, seem to be exorbitantly high, and I return to that again. Um, so that 2040 plan uh, provides uh, preferred scenarios basically that are more core driven than not. So ultimately it lays out a number of possibilities. It provides some economic assessment associated with that based upon modeling and that sort of thing. So that's kind of where I look to be able to provide some information. One other comment I want to make is on the water. Um, the water topic is one that is very, very confusing, both legally, technically, hydrolog hydrology related. And the problem is, is that um, there's not a lot of really good information that comes out of what I believe should be the Water Utility Authority's education process. Um, the only thing that they've really given us is basically a document that says we've got enough water. Well, if you start digging deeply into sort of the details of the water system that's in Albuquerque, you've got arsenic issues, you've got fuel spill issues associated with Kirtland Air Force Base, you've got San Juan Chama water flow, you've got all of these attributes, and also the shallow aquifer that ultimately recharges the Asakia system, you've got the Bosque, all of these things are very interrelated to the complexity of the water issue. The Water Utility Authority has done a very, very poor job of providing information to the public associated with the details of all of this. This information is in various pieces, but it's not consolidated in any way. And they've actually never come to the hearing uh, table to actually discuss these to anybody to try to educate people. That's part of the problem is there's confusion about this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those things ultimately is extremely important now. It will be more important as time goes on as more and more people move into the area and ultimately make the decisions associated with where development <coughs> needs to happen. And well, and one, one real quick comment on that. And, I, and, and the water issue is extremely complicated. I, I, I certainly acknowledge that. The Water Utility Authority manages our drinking water supply and they're looking at those same growth pro projections and their job is to plan for the future and to figure out how they're going to meet that growing demand over time, of which Santa Lina may be a part of. 
but that's part of their job. There's also the Conservancy District, which manages the surface water, which is a separate entity, a separate board, that manages the water that goes, that's the irrigation waters. And so one of the things that I think is very confusing for the general public, the average citizen, is to get a handle on who's doing what and how those two are related or not. And that just adds to that, I think, some of that complexity that, that Rod mentioned. And um, the Water Authority plans for that growth. They're looking at conservation. They're looking at water sources. They're looking at where that growth occurs. Um, and it's a very tough job. And I, I personally think they're doing a great job of it. What's well, interesting, though, is that, that information that. is not available to actually view on their website or right. anything of that mm -hmm. nature. So the problem is an education problem. All right. And, and I do want to say okay. that uh, their uh, communications manager, uh, David Morris, is always very responsive, at least for, for, mm -hmm. the, for the media mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will put the letter and information that he provided on our website for this segment. So that's really all of the time we have, Virginia, unless you have something that's uh, very, very I quick. I do. I do. Because I think that we also need to look this and look at this in general terms. And this is this decision is not just about this specific development. I think it's it's very symbolic of where we are going to choose the direction we're going to choose for our county and our city. And is that will we continue to support outdated sprawl type developments or will we move to become better stewards of the earth, which it, it, you know, due to climatic change, environmental changes, it's being demanded of us to use those limited resources we have very wisely. And Santolina, in our opinion, does not use them wisely. And so we, it's, it's a larger question that our city and our county really needs to address, especially the five commissioners that will be tasked in making this major decision for us, what direction will we head? Okay, well, I want to thank you because this is a complex and important topic, and I very much appreciate everyone coming to the table and uh, helping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs>